Om Namah Shivaya Namah Shivaya Om Namah Shivaya Om Namah Shivaya Om Namah Shivaya Namah Shivaya Om Namah Shivaya Om Namah Shivaya Om Vyasa said, On hearing the words of Sutta, the great sages said, Please narrate the wonderful Purana that fully treats of the essence of Vedanta. Very delighted at the request of the sages, Sutta meditated on Shiva and spoke to them. Sutta said, Contemplating on Shiva and free from ailments, may ye all hear this great Shiva Purana, the foremost among Puranas, that amplifies the essence of the Vedas, where the trio of bhakti, jnana, and vairagya, detachment, has been proclaimed, and the object that is knowable only through Vedanta, Brahman, particularly has been described. Sutta continued, May ye all hear the Shiva Purana that embodies the essence of the Vedas. Formerly, after many kalpas elapsed, and this kalpa started with the process of creation, a great dispute arose among the sages of six clans who held divergent views as to which is great and which is not. They approached Brahma, the creator, to ask him about the imperishable. With palms joined in reverence, they addressed him with words couched in humility. Thou art the creator of the entire universe, the cause of all causes. Who is that being older than all other tattvas, principles, the greatest of the great? Brahma said, He from whom words recede, not approaching him even with the mind, from whom this entire universe, beginning with Brahma, Vishnu, Rudra, and Indra, along with all elements and sense organs, is evolved at first. He is Lord Mahadev, the omniscient, the Lord of the universe. He can be realized by supreme devotion and not by other means. Rudra, Hari, Hara, and other lords of the devas, moved by great devotion, ever desire to see him. Of what avail is a more verbose statement? One is liberated by devotion unto Shiva. Devotion to the deity is due to his grace, and his grace is due to devotion. Just as the seed gives rise to the sprout, and the sprout produces the seed. Hence, O Brahmanas, all of you descend to the earth to propitiate the Lord. You have to perform a sacrifice of long duration for a thousand years. Shiva alone will be the presiding deity of this sacrifice. By the grace of Shiva alone, the means of achievement of the achievable can be realized. That is the essence of the Vidya, mystic knowledge, revealed in the Vedas. The sages said, What is that great sadhya, the achievable? What is that great sadhana, means of achievement? Of what sort is the sadhaka, performer of the right? Please explain these precisely. Brahma answered, The attainment of Shiva's region is the sadhya, the sadhana is devotional service rendered unto him. The sadhaka is the person who is free from desire even for permanent existence, which attitude is the result of his grace. Rites mentioned in the Vedas should be performed with the fruits thereof dedicated to him. Thence, through Salokya Mukti, one attains the feet of the great Lord. 
all attained the great fruit according to their standard of devotion. The ways of achieving these standards are manifold, as expounded by Isha himself. I shall condense the same and tell you the essential means. Shravana, hearing the glory of Shiva. Kirtana, glorifying him by means of words. And Manana, deliberation on him in the mind. Constitute the principal means. Maheshwara is to be heard about, glorified, and meditated upon. Thus the Shruti, the Vedas and Upanishads, is our authority. Resorting solely to this great means, all of you attain the achievable. Regarding visible things, people see with their eyes and begin their activity. Concerning the invisible world, they know through the ears and act accordingly. Hence, Shravana, listening, is the first right. The intelligent scholar must carefully hear the oral explanation of the preceptor and then practice the other methods, kirtana, glorifying, and manana, contemplation. When all the means, especially manana, are well exercised, moksha, liberation, is attained, and shiva yoga, unification with shiva, results gradually through the five kinds of mukti, sālokya, sāmipya, sārūpya, sārṣṭi, and sāyujya. All ailments of the body are nullified and supreme bliss is realized. The beginning of the process is difficult and painful indeed, but in the end, everything from beginning to end becomes auspicious and full of pleasure.